Hey, what's happening, ladies and gentlemen? Hey, welcome to the sixth episode of the King Penny's podcast. Big episode today, man, especially here in Longmont, Colorado. Finally got a guy to sit down. We've been trying to get for a couple months now. We got him in the building. And make sure when you come, man, bring gifts, man. Like, you know what I mean? Like, hey, this is a, this is a new thing. and you know? We want to keep this in place. So when you do come, hey, bring something for us. <laughs> hey, man, so uh, also, too, happy 4th of July. I'm sure you guys are out here barbecuing fireworks and you know what I mean? And if I didn't get an invite, hey, look here, I'm mad at you. But no, nah, man, enjoy it, man. Happy 4th of July. Hey, we want to take it into our guests, man. We're going to bring him in right now, man. Hey, thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it, man. Yeah. So we'll start with the name and uh, where you're from. Yeah, so my name is Dr. Alex Shepler. I'm from Rochester, New York, and I moved to Longmont about four years ago and started uh, my chiropractic practice, Evolve Health and Wellness, with my wife, Dr. Carolyn. Oh, okay. Yeah. So what made the transition? Why, why, why come from New York to Colorado? So when we were getting ready to graduate school, we went to school in New York. Um, we started traveling around the country and tried to figure out, you know, where do we want to go? We knew we didn't want to stay on the East Coast. And within 24 hours of being in Colorado, uh, we decided that we want to be here. The mountains are beautiful. The culture is very fitness oriented. People take care of themselves. They take care of their bodies. And we want to help facilitate that. That's a huge part of our philosophy of care is taking people from injury all the way up to performance. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I'm looking at you chiropractor. I'm like, hey, man, when <laughs> you get to snap and stuff, yep. it's over. No, <laughs> but no, nah, man, I want to I want to know, though, like so you studied uh, your doctor, right? Mm -hmm. And so what is your actual degree like your actual like? Yeah, so I have a doctorate in chiropractic. Um, I got my bachelor's of science uh, majoring in biomedical sciences from Rochester Institute of Technology. And then while I was getting my doctorate, I also got my master's in applied clinical nutrition. So I help people manage metabolic diseases with nutrition as well as weight loss, which is probably the most common thing that I deal with. And funnily enough, when people get to a healthy body composition, the majority of metabolic diseases tend to write themselves. Okay. So, so what does the day-to-day -day look like? Like what is? Yeah, so day-to-day -day we show up at the clinic, we're working with clients in the gym through rehab, through personal training to help them achieve their goals. Um, we have nutrition consultations going on. We also have acupuncture, massage therapy, and chiropractic in the clinic. Um, so I'm wearing a bunch of different hats yeah. um, over the course of the day, which is exciting for me and um, also helps me um, transition patients from being fixated on pain and their injury to performance, which has been shown time and time again to improve clinical outcomes. No, that's really good. Yeah. So you chose this career path, whatever mm -hmm. like that. How did you get involved in fitness or in this career path period? Yeah. Um, well, when I was nine years old, I was a huge fan of Dragon Ball Z. And I was like, man, wouldn't it be cool to look like that? Yeah. <laughs> That's where it all started. That's where it all started. And, uh, you know, I, I looked in the mirror. I was, I was a little chubby. I was kind of nerdy. Had uh, big, thick glasses. I have contacts in now. <laughs> he um, said those are gone. Yeah, I couldn't, see, I couldn't drink this or see the writing on this water bottle from here if oh, I didn't wow. have my contacts in. Yeah. Um, but I started doing sit-ups, push-ups every single day and just fell in love with training, transformation, and fitness. And that's what kind of gave me momentum towards fitness and then ultimately physical medicine. Yeah. Um, I was really fortunate. I had a wonderful mentor, my wrestling coach in middle school and high school, taught me how to train. He saw me just goofing around in the weight room in eighth grade. And he was like, it seems like you're into this. Like, let's, let's get you educated. So yeah. he taught me how to train. I was really fortunate. Um, to have his guidance and then yeah things just kind of snowballed from there no that's cool yeah. because right now you know like you're competing in bodybuilding now. yes like so you, yes. I mean I see you train others but you're also your own trainer yeah I'm a huge believer in practicing what you preach so yeah yeah because that'd be crazy sometimes like when you do see trainers and yeah I mean that's, that's, <laughs> that's not to say people can't know what they're doing I mean my favorite example is Bill Belichick didn't really play football, but he's a fantastic coach. Whether or not you like him is a different story, but you know, he, he knows his stuff. Yeah. But for me, I always want to work with somebody who I know can bridge the gap between the abstraction, the knowledge and the application. 
because yeah. there's a certain level of practicality there where you've navigated pitfalls yourself mm -hmm. that you can actually help people through the, the application process of yeah. a lot of these principles. And also in the fitness industry, man, it's a lot of optics. Yes. You know, like no if doubt. you see no like, doubt. You know, it's almost like you go to the grocery store and you're getting produce. Yeah, like, it's like, hey, look, I don't look, look like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Look, hey, I'm going to leave this bruised banana over here. Yeah. And we're going to go with this one. Yeah, but no. So your next show is when? Uh, July 28th and 29th, I have Nationals in Las Vegas. If I'm fortunate enough to take the overall, I'll wind up becoming a IFBB pro bodybuilder and classic physique. Hey, so man. I'm going to give him my best shot. How are you feeling though? I oh. feel fantastic. Yeah, you feel yeah, fantastic. Yeah. No nerves, no anxious feelings. You're just ready. Yeah. So I mean, I've been training a really long time. I've been practicing um, a really long time, and I've been a huge fan of bodybuilding because um, it's it's just the perfect confluence of athleticism, um, science, and then art, which are three things that are near and dear to my heart. So if they can all converge and I can engage with an activity that has all those elements, I'm super stoked. So for my first show last year that qualified me for the national show, it was really funny. I was expecting to be anxious and really nervous, but I got up there, it was just surreal. I was just having a blast because I knew I put in so much work to prepare. I feel like most people, um, when they do feel anxious or really nervous, it's because they don't necessarily have confidence in their preparation. Okay. Yeah. All right. No, nah, that's really good. Because I'm always nervous. Yeah. Like, even though I'm prepared, I'm doubly prepared <laughs> and nervous, stuff so. like that. Hey, man, no, nah, no, nah, you're not making me nervous. But I'm just saying, <laughs> like, just the thought of, like, you know, just getting on stage and going through the grind for all that time. And then, you know, because you think of different outcomes all the time in your mind. Mm -hmm. You know, like. Yeah. And so, and so the, my question is also too, so outside of the group lifts that I see you do or whatever like that, do you do some individual, like, you know what I mean? Just you. Yeah. Um, so I do train by myself at least a few times per week. Okay. Um, as I get closer to the show, those times will become increasingly frequent yeah. because, you know, I just want to get in, get out. I still have a lot of other things to do, but I really try to um, include as many people into it as possible because... For me, training and fitness is such an integral part of the community that we're trying to build mm -hmm. through the practice. And it's important for me to share my passion with others. Okay. Um, because I, I, because yeah. I see you all the time motivating people. Like your, your brother lives with yeah, you. Yeah. You know, I see Hunter. I see uh, Pardo, mm -hmm. uh, other Alex and stuff like that. Like I see you all the time motivating and hey come on let's get you, let's get these sets in you go this yeah. time we go this time let's change the weight let's do this you know what i mean i was just wondering if you you know what i mean like when you're by yourself yeah is it that same energy do you have that same like you know what i mean like that yeah same drive? it's definitely more internal um definitely not as as vocal as i am when i'm training with a group of guys yeah but in my mind it's it's pretty much the same no yeah. no that's cool yeah. so i didn't want to stay there though but uh Explain to me, though, like, how did Evolve come about? Mm -hmm. Like, how did the whole, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, how did you decide to go ahead and take that leap? Yeah. So I worked for a pretty large practice down in Centennial when I first moved to Colorado. And um, it, they had a really wonderful model. Uh, they, they, too, had personal training, physical therapy, acupuncture, massage therapy. And they had that interdisciplinary uh, approach and comprehensive approach to healthcare that really affected some awesome outcomes. So that was kind of the template. But where I felt like I could improve was as the clinician seeing them through more phases of that care model. Yeah. Right. So instead of me just being the chiropractor as I was at this clinic, I was also the rehab specialist. I was also the performance specialist, the nutritionist, because it gives me a more complete understanding of what's going on with a patient and what intervention is going to be most appropriate to them. And from a philosophical perspective, um, I feel like, and this is going to, I don't want to come off as too critical, but a lot of healthcare providers just miss they miss the mark, whether it's intentional or not, I don't know. But they 
they just fall short on um, giving patients the care that they need. I, I don't feel as though a lot of practitioners take the time to listen to their patients, mm -hmm. to hear where they're coming from, hear their story, and really take the time to give them the very best intervention that's most specific to their complaint. Yeah, because a lot of, a lot of your clients, you know, I've ran into a couple of them and stuff like that. They speak very highly of you and Nate. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they they say, like, you know what I mean? You, you're accessible all the time. You're mm -hmm. easy to talk to. He'll tell you. He'll break it down to you and stuff like yeah, that. I really try to be. And like even Nate, he was at the uh, the gym mm -hmm. uh, over at the Wake Pound Rockies and somebody had asked him something about their hip. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he gets to breaking it down. Like, so you need to stretch Dr. this Nate thing. is <laughs> one smart dude. You know, he presented um, a bunch of research in Berlin while he was still in, uh, uh, while he was still pursuing his doctorate. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, he is a really, really bright guy. Um, we were super lucky to have him. No, also, too, and I was telling him, I'm really glad that you and him come over, you know, so people yeah. can have, like, you know, just access to your knowledge, your wealth of knowledge, and, and the explanation behind things. Guys like me, I just know how to move weight, man. Look here, mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you, hey, this is why Clearly. we're doing this. This is why we're doing this. Let's get to it, stuff like that. But people, uh, they, 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 they respect more people who can tell them why. Sure. Hey, this is why this is moving. This is what yeah. we're doing. Put these pinkies out for this. Put the, you right. know what I mean? Not everybody wants that. Yeah, no, but no. the people that do, they, yeah, yeah, they, 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 they want to, you know what I mean? No, me, I just, hey, just do it. Yeah. yeah. Like, you yeah. know, move like, the weight, your muscles get bigger. Yeah. There's so, you know what I mean? So having guys like you come around, man, it's just been a big help and a, and great addition to the. Well, I'm glad uh, I have a place to come around too. No, for <laughs> sure, man. No, I mean, the outdoor lifting is great. It is. So. How many doctors do you guys have at the practice? Like, how many? So we have myself, mm -hmm. Dr. Carolyn, Dr. Nate, Dr. Olivia, and Dr. Selena. Okay. Dr. Selena is also an acupuncturist, and Dr. Olivia does dry needling. Um, so Dr. Selena does traditional Chinese medicine, offers an alternative approach to healthcare. And uh, Dr. Nate, Dr. Carolyn, and myself are all CSCS, uh, NISCA certified strength and conditioning specialists. Dr. Carolyn specializes in pediatric and perinatal care. She helps a lot of pregnant women. She's Webster certified, which is a specific chiropractic technique to help women through um, pregnancy and postpartum. Um, and then I also have the nutrition background and I, I pretty much tackle that part of the practice exclusively. So pretty much you guys just hit everything from all angles. Yep. Every, everything. Yeah, we all have A one-stop shop at Evolve, niches, but... at Evolve, man. Yep. That's cool. That's and really you guys are up here off of uh, 119, right? That's right. Town? Yep. Oh, yep. Okay. We're right across, across from Long's Peak Hospital oh. um, where the Iron Horse apartment complex is. Yeah. There's some professional buildings over there. So, uh, yeah, we're kind of tucked away a little bit, but we have a gym space, four treatment rooms, and uh, it's a really cool spot. Oh, okay. Yeah. So outside of acupuncture, chiropractic stuff, mm -hmm. what else do you guys offer specifically? Yeah, well, I actually, I got a, I got a flyer here. Okay. Um, so we got... You can, you can just read it out. Okay. We'll post, no, we'll post this. Uh, we'll post this up on the uh, okay. over, overlay and stuff gotcha. like that, so people can see. But yeah, that. we we offer chiropractic, personal training, physical rehabilitation, massage therapy, acupuncture, dry needling, electric stimulation, uh, spinal decompression. Um, so yeah, we we offer a, a bunch of different services and. Um, I think that's really important because if, if you're too specialized, like if you're a chiropractor and you only adjust, yeah. if all you have is a hammer, everything starts to look like a nail. Yeah. And people oh, are a lot more complex than that. And that's not to say that adjustments can't help the vast majority of people. They certainly can. But that's just one tool we have in our toolkit. And um, I'm a firm believer in offering a really comprehensive model of care. Okay. So anybody trying to break into your field, say, for instance, you have a youngster or say, for instance, you have uh, somebody else trying to break into your field, what would you suggest for them? How would they go about it? Yeah. Well, I think the first and, and most important thing is figure out how you want to serve your community and how your passion can align with your career. Because if you're just going to a job, you're, you're going to be so disenchanted right? Like if you say, I want to be a medical doctor, but you hate being in the hospital, you hate performing surgery, a blood freaks you out, then that's probably not the right career path for you. So you have to be really honest with yourself. Um, 
So I, I'd start with some serious introspection. Figure out what you want out of your life and how you want to serve the community. If you want to get into chiropractic specifically, um, Northeastern College of Health Sciences is a wonderful program. That's where I graduated from. Okay. Um, so they're located in Seneca Falls, New York, on the north end of Cayuga Lake, opposite Cornell and Ithaca. Okay. Yeah. Right. So this might be... This isn't a question that I had for you, but it just came about just mm -hmm. now, like in my mind. How do you, and you don't have to answer this, but how do you guys keep clients motivated? Or how do you, you know, some sometimes clients, they go up, down, they wane, they mm -hmm. maybe not, you know what I mean, aren't, aren't as active as you would want them to be. How do you find that, you know what I mean, that right way to push them? Like, or get... That's something we're constantly um, working towards and trying to figure out. And it's always, that, that's the thing with coaching is you have to try to meet people where they're at. And it really begins with making sure people understand A, what they want, and B, what it's gonna take to get there, right? If somebody comes in, they're like, I wanna be a bodybuilder. And I say, okay, well, why do you want that? You know, that, okay. that first interview really gives me a lot of information about their expectations, um, how far off they are in their habits from uh, being able to achieve what they say they want, and then finding the best solution for them, right? Because, you know, like if somebody comes in, they're like, I want to put on 20 pounds of muscle, but they don't want to eat a certain way. They don't want to train with a certain level of intensity. It's just not going to happen for them. They're going to get frustrated and they're not going to get the result that they're looking for. And I think really, it's really important. I always have a very candid conversation with all of my clients. It's like, this requires a certain degree of sacrifice. If specifically, I'm using bodybuilding as the example, but anything can apply. No, but I want to, but I want to know how does that, because that has yeah. to weigh on you. Sure. When a client Absolutely. kind of is dragging Absolutely. or kind of. You know what I mean? And you're training yourself. So right. you need to be like yeah. engaged in, you're in a high level of training. And yeah. just to have somebody who's kind of going through the motions, not really into it. Yeah. Like how I do don't encounter too much of that. Yeah. Most of the people who fall into um, that sort of lull tend to just fall off altogether. Okay. All right. Um, because, you know, they realize that this isn't the right solution for them. Um, and then it's my job as a practitioner to find the correct solution. It's like, okay, you don't want to spend an hour, five days a week in the gym or an hour and a half or whatever. Um, but you do need fitness. You do need strength training. I mean, weight training is going to help with metabolic disease. It's going to help with insulin sensitivity. It's going to help with bone mineral density. Everybody needs to do it. So how do we find the solution that's most palatable to your lifestyle? Um, so if that's like 20 minute circuit training, that's fine. I really try to meet people where they're at so that they do stay motivated yeah. and you know, not everybody's going to want to like isolate a bicep curl. And it's like, that's boring. I don't want to do that. Give me some burpees. Give me some thrusters. Like I want to keep moving. Great. We train people in a, a variety of different ways. So we work with a lot of football players, uh, high school athletes of all different sports, um, we work with a lot of endurance athletes as well. Dr. Carolyn um, and Dr. Olivia program uh, marathon programs to help people PR. So everybody's program looks a little different. It's always very specific to their goals. And Dr. Olivia is actually a gait specialist too. So she, mm -hmm. she'll watch people on a treadmill, take a look at their gait cycle. She can make recommendations on orthotics, on footwear that's going to help um, mitigate certain compensatory patterns in their gait that might ultimately result in overuse or chronic injuries for our endurance athletes. Mm -hmm. So to that end, um, circling back to the whole motivation thing, it's really a matter of figuring out exactly what people want and then making sure you design a program that's palatable to them and that will get them to their goal once you both come to an agreement that that goal is appropriate for them. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you opened up the door with the running thing mm -hmm. because I want to know about the 5K. I want to know how it came yeah, yeah. about. You know what I mean? Yeah. How it, you know. Got dog days of summer, 
5K. Oh, hey, all Macintosh Lake. All my crew, 200 yep. pounders up. We out there, Mike. Like, <laughs> so you know, uh, Camillo, Dustin. Hey, you guys better be ready to go, yep. man. We yep. got to show out. That's uh, right. Macintosh Lake. But how did it come about? Like mm -hmm. you guys deciding? Because I see you guys do the speed training. Yep. I, yep. I see Every that at Tuesday six. At Eagle Crest. Yeah, at yep. six at six uh, six p.m. Mm -hmm. or whatever. I see that. But how did you guys? Uh, I guess evolve. How did evolve evolve into a five k? Like you so, know what I mean? a lot of a lot of what we do in the community outreach and those sorts of um, groups that we put together all stem from our personal passions. So for me, I do posing classes. I do group uh, bodybuilding workouts. And Dr. Carolyn and Dr. Olivia are really passionate about marathons, ultra marathons, and they have a lot of clients that are passionate about those things. So. We just want to bring people together and we want to bring people together around fitness no matter what shape that takes um i have tremendous respect for anybody who push and i i believe everybody should have some physical discipline that they push um and they and they push to their their fullest potential whatever that may be because that kind of serves as a foundation in my opinion for when everything else gets tough yeah you know you, you strengthen your resolve you um, set about suffering to a certain extent yeah. uh, willingly and everything else in life becomes a little bit and easier. I heard, I heard somebody say like there was a statistic I don't know the numbers doc but mm -hmm. they was like your children are more likely to be healthy if you if you know, Boulder County isn't a good example of that yeah. with all these little kids running marathons and I mean the, the number of insane athletes that come mm -hmm. out of this area I think is a huge testament to exactly that because I mean, I see whole families out hiking, running on the track, lifting weights. It's, it's just such a wonderful thing. And again, huge part of the, what attracted me to Longmont, Colorado in the first place. No, man, look here. I'm not gonna hold too much of your time up, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. Like I said, you coming out, you spending time, and the show is when again, so we can all root for you. Yeah, it's July 28th and 29th. It'll be in Las Vegas at the Horseshoe Casino. Okay. Um, I'll be in my skivvies. I'll be tan. I'll be oiled up. And hopefully I'll uh, I'll do well. I'm, nah. I'm really looking forward to so it. So you got that. Uh, also, too, let's uh, plug in the, uh, the race, the Dog Days of Summer. That's sure. what day is that? Uh, the Dog Days of Summer, that's August 5th at 8 a.m., uh, we're getting the t-shirts printed. We'll have vendors there. I'm going to sing the national anthem. It's going to be super fun. Um, so, yeah. Hold on. Time out. Before I wrap this thing up. <laughs> so, you sing also. I do. So, you sing, you cook, you draw. I do. Well, yeah. What's something you can't do, Doc? Let's, let's, how about we have a whole interview about that? What's well, that depending on who you ask, I can't do any of those things. So, <laughs> it's, like, it's all man, relative. Like, hey, man, you, I, I, I honestly want to commend you, man. You live a complete life, man. Thank like, you. And I... You know, just overall, man, you're you. always doing something, always yeah. promoting positivity, man, always motivating. That's why it was tough to ask you the questions about, hey, man, what do you do when people kind of bring you down? Because yeah. I don't think you let it happen. I never see, like... It, it happens, you, but... You, you know, know, but the way you push through it, man, is just, Thank it's you. inspiring, man. And like I, I said, you're that. always upbeat, man, always great attitude, man. Thank you. And then uh, let's uh, plug, last one, uh, Evolve. Let's yep. give them the address again. Sure. Evolve Health and Wellness. It's uh, 1715 Iron Horse Drive, Longmont, Colorado, 80501 Suite, number 145. Hey, look here, man. You heard it from the doc himself. He tunes in the King Penny podcast. That's and you right. need to as well, man. <laughs> so we're going to get back to the 4th of July, man. We got barbecues to do. We got things to do, man. Tap in with him. I'm going to post up everything that he put, uh, that he brought and everything like that, man. We're rooting for him uh, to get his pro card, man. He wins. We all win. It's a good look for the city, man. Shows him that we down with bodybuilding, too, and stuff like that, man. Thank you guys for tuning in, man. King Penny, Doc Shep, we're out of here, man. Thank you. You take it easy. Yeah.